Hello, and welcome to another lesson with Professor Choi. Today, we're going to be having a discussion about how to find a utility maximization point using indifference curves instead of the algebra that I showed you before in a different video. So, if you, find, if you want to find the utility maximization point for somebody who's buying two individual products and you have a, um, the, quant the quantities that you want to buy but you want to maintain it within a particular budget, one of the things that you need to remember about finding utility maximization is that the point of utility maximization is to try to maximize my total utility but I need to stay within a particular budget. Now, these are some of the assumptions um, when you're building this particular model that you're trying to figure out when you're, when you're trying to figure out utility maximization. So, we're going to have two products that you want to buy. The two products are product A and product B. So, we represent the maximization point as QA, QB. So, we want to find the best QA, QB point to purchase. Now, in order to find that point, uh, we are giving a budget. We're going to call that budget Y. So this is a level of income that you can spend on these two individual products. And you are given a price for A and a price for B. All right? Now, if you went through the algebra example uh, or on how to find utility maximization, we, you would notice that it takes a fairly long time to figure it out. Usually, graphs work a little bit better. Uh, by the way, I would not be trying to watch this video with any other preview, without pre the previous knowledge to get to here, which is a chapter on utility maximization in the economics class. All right. So in any case, um, if you're trying to find utility maximization using an indifference curve, we first have to define what an indifference curve is. So let's graph the two products that you want to buy. Let's call them again QA and QB. So an indifference curve is a curve that shows you a set of points where you are indifferent between purchasing product A or product B. So it's something like this. Let's call this curve uh, indifference curve 1 and it gives you a total utility of say 100. Remember the word utility means happiness or satisfaction. So if this um, total utility gives you a total 100 and this is indifference curve 1 then each individual point on that indifference curve gives you exactly the same total utility okay um, any indifference curve below that one will give you less total utility and any indifference curve above that one will give you a higher total utility so we can have an infinite amount of indifference curve on this side and you will get a higher total utility or you could have an infinite amount of indifference curve on the lower side of that one and it will give you a lower total utility. So in order to maximize your total utility, all you have to do is you make sure that you select the highest indifference curve possible. So find the best QA, QB, the first thing that we need to do is select the highest indifference curve possible, highest total utility. All right? Now, when we were doing this example, another thing that we were talking about is when you're purchasing these two items, you have to basically give up one in order to obtain the other. So, um, you have to look at your budget. Now the budget we can define it by basically using this formula what we're basically saying in this formula is that the amount of money that I have I need to spend either buying product A or buying product B the letter P, remember, stands for price. The letter Q is a quantity that you're going to be purchasing. P is the price of product B. And then QB is the quantity of product B. So 
the total amount of money that you have, Y is your income, we're going to be spending on either product A or product B. So the amount that I buy on A will be that, and the amount that I buy on B will be that. All right? This represented our budget constraint when we were doing this algebraically. Now we need to turn this into a line so we can graph it together with the indifference curve. Now when we were doing this line, we put QB over here and we put QA over here. So in order to turn this into a line, I basically have to isolate QB so I can plug it in. Okay? So let's do that. We just did it. Now let me let me change that into a format that most people would immediately recognize because you've taken at least the um, geometry class in high school. So this is the same as this. Now, this right here is the same as y equals negative x plus b. So, this is our y, this is our slope, this is our qa, which is x in the graph, and this is our y-intercept. So, now, with our budget constraint turned into a line that we can plot, we can now take that budget constraint and plot it. So we have our QA here and our QB here. And um, the y-intercept is going to be y over PB. Notice that the slope is negative. And the slope is negative by negative PA over PB. And it's going to end up over here on y over pa and we have voila our budget constraint all right now let's try to do utility maximization using the concept that i just explained of indifference curves and a budget line all right so, here we go, we got our QA, we got our QB, we have a budget line, and then now we have this set of indifference curves. Now the lowest indifference curve is going to give you the, high, the lowest utility. The higher the indifference curve, the higher the total utility level. All right, now let's say that I would ask you which one of these points do you think, let's call this point X, point W, point Z, point K, and point uh, N. So which one of those points do you think will be our utility maximizing point? All right, to find the answer, you need to remember again what we're trying to do when we're utility maximizing. What we're trying to do is we're trying to stay within our budget constraint. In other words, don't spend any more money on whatever we have and get the highest happiness possible, AKA utility. So in order to find the highest utility point here, what we need to do is we need to select a point on the line and the reason we want to select the point on the line is because any point in the line will be maintaining this equality. 
So any point that we select on our budget line will be a combination QA, QB that maintains the equality sign and therefore we're spending exactly the amount of money that we have on our budget. So the only points possible here that are exactly on my budget are X, W, and Z. Now point K is too expensive and I don't have enough money to buy it. Point N means that I'm not spending all my money and I could do better by simply spending a little more. All right, now out of point X, W, and Z, which one will be the winner? Well, look at the indifference curves. If you select point Z, that will give you the same level of total utility or happiness. Remember, utility is the same as happiness. Z will give you the same level of total utility as point N and as point X. But we could do better. So if we pick point W, notice that we can have a higher total utility and still stay within our budget. So the answer in this particular case is point W is our utility maximizing point. All right, I don't know if you did the algebra example with me on the other video where we did utility maximization, but the algebra example took at least 20 minutes just to set up and then an extra 20 minutes just to solve it. Utility maximization using curves is a heck of a lot faster, as you can see, because this video only took about 11 minutes. All right, now, in just to make sure that you are getting this concept down pat, let's do a couple more twists to this story. All right, first twist is to kind of change those utility, um, those uh, indifference curves a little bit, and then ask you the same question. So now we got point X here, W, N, T, S, this is still QA, it's still QB. And on this one, we're going to do a little change, like a little shift. All right? Now, this one up here, the indifference curves are those red lines. The higher the indifference curve, the higher my total utility level. So this is total utility equals 100, total utility equals 200, this is total utility equals 300, and total utility equals 400. All right? Now, if you're following the same kind of logic to the utility maximization, then notice that you cannot select point N or point S because those points are above your budget. If you select point X, the only happiness level you're getting is 100, and you could do better by moving to a higher utility. You could pick point W. Point W will give you a higher total utility and still stay within your budget. But look, you could do even better by selecting point T because point T is within your budget but at a higher total utility level. So in this particular case, point T is the winner. You get the highest utility level and you stay within your budget. All right, on this one right here, I want you to understand that we can kind of like play with this as well. So, if this was the winner before, what do you think will happen if I decide to, say, lower the price of product B? Alright? Now, let me put all these other points that we had here before. So, this is my QA. This is Y over PA. This point right here we found by doing Y over PB. And this is my QB. All right, so what do you think will happen if all of a sudden I dropped the price of product B? All right, if you drop the price of product B, notice that this point is going to increase because the denominator is going to get smaller. All right, so 
what's going to happen is this point is going to move upwards to say there. This point doesn't change, given the current change. And this will be my new budget line. Because my new budget line is slightly higher than before, as you can see, then we're going to be able to move up to a higher total utility line. So if a price of a product decreases, notice that what we're going to do is we're going to be moving to this higher consumption point compared to before, and hence, if a price drops, people buy more, for example. All right? Um, I hope uh, this was supposed to be a quick video, by the way, only explaining an appendix on a particular chapter for anybody else out there who wants to have a bit of an idea of how to do utility maximization using curves. Thank you for uh, another uh, hanging out with another lesson with Professor Choi. Have a good one.